So, good day to each and every one of you. I am Mr. Mark Anthony Trigo and I'll be your discussant for this day. So, bear with me because this report will be just a short one and I hope that you will learn something from this discussion and as well as you'll enjoy our discussion for today. And for us further to proceed to our discussion, uh, let me start by asking you a question. Don't worry, this is just a simple one. How are you today? Kamusta ka? <laughs> so, presented on the screen are different types of emoji, which describes how are you feeling today? So, are you feeling okay? Be, niya pa okay. <laughs> so, are you feeling okay? Or... At some point, you're kind of feeling disappointed. Or are you feeling stressed? Or are you feeling sad? Or on the other hand, maybe you're feeling happy. Yeah, paneng happy. <laughs> or are you feeling perfectly fine and happy? Sana all. Ha? <laughs> or better, you're feeling super happy, loved, and blessed. Sana all. <laughs> So, you can comment down your answer on the comment section, uh, comment section in this Google, on, the, on the Google Classroom so that I'll know that you've watched this video and as well as that will serve as your participation in this pre-recorded discussion. So, if you're kind of feeling disappointed, stressed, or sad, I just want you to know that you're doing great job. Keep up the good work. And maybe today the clouds have taken over the beautiful rays of the sun. But don't you worry because the clouds will set aside and give way to the beautiful sun rays of the sun. I, f I hope you're getting what I mean. <laughs> So I'm trying hard to speak in English fluently. So bear with me. <laughs> and yeah, you're doing a great job and I believe in you. Keep it up. Or if you're feeling happy or perfectly fine and super happy, loved and blessed, sana ul. <laughs> I'm so happy for you that you found a reason to become happy for today. And so much to that. So that's it. So how are you today? I'll be waiting for your response on the comment section in the Google Classroom. So the reason why we'd answer this question, because basically this type of scale or question are an is an example of what is the main lesson of our discussion for today, which is about semantic differential or semantic differential scale. And for us further to know what is semantic differential or the semantic differential scale, scale, let us discuss first its history. So let's start. So what is semantic differential? So semantic differential is a, was introduced and mainly developed by the U.S. psychologist Charles E. Osgood in the year 1916 to 1916. 91 and it, it is a type of semantic rating scale measuring the connotative meaning of concepts like terms objects events activities ideas and etc and it also captures the affective and cognitive components of respondents attributions to selected concepts on a multi-dimensional level different from other rating scales, the semantic differential is, a univer is universally applicable. It measures associations, motivations, emotion, attitude, etc. for almost every concept. So maybe you've encountered this type of scale, which is the semantic differential. Maybe you're playing an app or using an app and then there's a pop-up in which would you like to rate us? And then there is five to one star in which on the right on the right side it says satisfied and then on the left on the left side it says not satisfied. 
So that's an example of semantic differential. We encounter this kind of scale every day, but maybe we just don't notice it, or maybe because we don't know. That is, that is a, a sample of semantic differential. So for an example of what is semantic differential, as you can see presented on the screen, there we have a scale or a different, that is what you call a semantic differential scale in which we can observe here. Wait, where's my mouse? Uh -huh. Laser pointer, yeah. So as you can see here on the middle section of the scale, there we have a zero, uh, a zero, or what somehow what we call the neutral or the safe safe point of the scale, or the neutral point of the scale. While on the left side of the scale is we have, we have a negative one, negative two, negative three, and there's a and a word here that says weak, rude, and messy. And that is what we call the negative point. Of the negative point of the scale. And in the right side, we can see that there is positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, and there's a word that that is a positive, refers to a positive adjective or positive word which in 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 this scale we can see that there is the word strong courteous and neat so why is it like that so bakit ganun bakit ganun yung scale and ayan yung i-discuss natin pardon me for using tula taga tagalog english tagalog medium and reporting so what is the purpose of semantic differential um the major purpose of the semantic differential is to understand the connotative meaning of concepts by measuring the connotative similarities and differences within and between the respondent's rating. So as you can see, there are different uh, poles or uh, po negative their points, the positive and the negative points uh, in the scale. And the purpose of the semantic differential scale is to find the similarities and differences within and between the respondent's ratings. So, ano nga ba yung bumubuo sa semantic differential? Or what is, the, what is the parts of semantic differential scale? So, it says here that the original semantic differential questionnaires contains a list of seven point scales, the negative three, the zero, and then the positive threes, between bipolar, Contrasting adjectives, for example, we have the good and bad, just like on the previous example, we have the weak and the strong, or light and dark, or social or unsocial. And there we have a neutral zero point. Merely the poles of semantic differential scales are labeled and the scales intervals are assumed to be the equal distance. So as you can see presented on the screen, there we have the neutral zero point in which I'm pointing using the laser. The laser. This is what we call the neutral zero point. And then on the right side, we have the positive one to positive three numbers in which it refers to the positive polar of the scale. Just like presented on the earlier example, we have the different sides, the positive, the negative sides. And on the right side as we as you can see that there's a negative one to three numbers and that is the negative polar of the scale so that's the parts of the semantic differential and that is very um evident on the previous examples that i presented and for us to see uh, other examples of how semantic differential scale are used, let me give you an example. So this one, semantic differential is used in finding the feedback of a customer regarding to the services of, the, of a product or company, perhaps. So in this 
in this semantic differential scale, they they only used only five points, but it is not necessarily to use seven points, but originally it contains seven. But here, there we have the neutral point, the neutral zero point of the differential scale. And then on the right si uh, left side of the differential scale, semantic differential scale, we have the negative polar, the negative side of the scale, in which it is labeled unsatisfied and very unsatisfied. By the way, the, the, the question that is being asked here is, how satisfied are you with our services? And here on the right side of the scale, we have the satisfied or very satisfied, which refers to the positive polar of the scale. So you might, you might have encountered this kind of semantic differ differential scale on using an apps or what or giving feedbacks. So that's it. Another example is there we have the semantic differential scale in which we use they labeled number four as the neutral point neutral zero point of the scale and on the um, here on the first example uh, we have on the left is we have the in uh, inaccessible and then on the right we have is the totally accessible which refers this one refers to the positive polar of the scale while on the right on the left side we have the negative polar of the semantic differential scale and there number four is this one is the neutral point of the semantic differential scale so there, same same concept in the second example. On the left side, we have the negative side, negative polar side of the scale, while on the right side we have the positive polar of the scale. While in this part, we have the it has been switched because uh, the positive polar scale is being is transferred here on the left side while. The negative polar side of the scale is transferred here on the uh, right side. So basically, there are no rules in where should be the negative or the negative or the positive side polars of the scale, as long as it doesn't it contains a neutral zero point as well as it contains two two polars, so in the positive negative, there should be no problem. So again, semantic differential questions simply ask where the respondent's position is on a scale between two bipolar adjectives or points, the two bipolar points that we have or that we use in the scale. So researchers or researchers use the semantic differential scale to quest questions to ask respondents to rate products, organizations, or services with multi points questions with polar adjectives or points which refers to the numbers and at the extremes of the scales like likely unlikely happy sad love the service or hated the service and this one is we have uh, I'll be discussing the advantages of using the semantic differential so number one is it has an advantage in terms of language there are two polar adjectives for the factor to be measured and a scale connecting both these polars. So, um, guys, hindi lang, ano, hindi lang uh, specifically adjective yung pwede natin gamitin sa paggawa ng semantic differential scale. Pwede ding numbers, katulad nung pinaresent na example kanina in which they use the number one, one numbers one to eight or one to seven ba yun? As long as nandun yung point na magde-describe sa negative polar and the positive polar sides of the scale. It is more advantageous than a Likert scale because the researchers declares a statement and expects the respondents to either agree or disagree 
with that. So in semantic differential kasi, uh, they use adjectives in which it doesn't only measure if the respondents agrees or disagrees, but rather it also gives a feedback or they can express imo- op- their opinions about the matter. And it is more accurately, accurately and entirely due to the polar options provided and the semantic differential. So, may kalayaan yung mga respondents na pumili if, I, if either they agree or disagree and as well as it, they gives them, it gives them a posi- uh, positive or negative reaction towards the concept or the matter that's being addressed on the scale. So, that's it. Uh, that would be all for semantic differential. However, if you have questions, guys, if you have questions regarding to our discussion for today, let me know by commenting it on the comment section in the Google Classroom. And as well as if you have, if you have um, clarifications that you want to be clarified, feel free to comment it down on the comment section in the Google Classroom. So that would be all for our discussion for today. Thank you for listening. Hey guys, I hope you've learned a lot from the discussion. Bye-bye.